Hey, what's going on YouTube? PB the Fox here with the Ravnica Historical Society back with another video. And today we're going to be taking a peek at the store, seeing what's new with the release of the Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realm set, if you can say all of that. Uh, I actually had done a little video earlier where I had saved up about 30,000 gold, opened a bunch of packs, and then as I recorded the video, I didn't have my microphone set up correctly. Well, let's, let's back up. My computer messed something up and redid all of my settings so that it wasn't picking up my microphone. And I didn't bother to pay attention to, what is this, OBS, to make sure that my microphone was picking up. So I recorded about a 20 minute video, and then it didn't have any sound from the mic, so that was pretty pointless. So today we're going to do a quick peek at the store, what's going on in here. The set's got something new. Of course we've got the new Battle Pass available, 3400 gems. But first we'll start with the daily deals, we've got some dragons in here. Shimmer Dragon, meh, but Goldspan Dragon, pretty exciting. This is a highly playable card in Standard, so it's cool. That we've got this thing. Same with Sprite Dragon. A lot of play in Historic right now. So if you're on Blue Red Phoenix, go ahead and get these. Sorry if you can hear that trash truck outside. About every 35 seconds, there's a bunch of noise. And so I, I just can't seem to find a quiet moment to record this stuff. But we've got Opportunistic Dragon and Draconic Invention. Intervention. Already two. And then 400 gems. I already purchased it, but the purchase price is 300 gems or the equivalent amount of gold, whatever it is. I just used my gems to get more gems, so it was 100 free gems. Whatever about that. With the packs, it's the same as always. With 50, you get this cool art of the Vorpal Sword, which is kind of neat. I actually really like this. I think this card might see some play in Standard. It's a one-drop equipment that equips for two black, and then giving your creature plus two plus oh in death touch is not a joke, especially if we can get this on something that's got flying or menace is even better, because creatures with menace and death touch are so annoying to deal with and then it's got kind of this late game mana sink built in for eight mana until end of turn if you hit a player with it you death touch them they lose the game pretty cool if you buy this you get double the amount which i know it's a little annoying that you get two of the same thing but on the other hand i like that they're not locking a second card behind the more expensive bundle because that would be super annoying now oh, we already checked out the daily deals the featured stuff over here, so we've got blah, 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 talked about that. Some new stickers coming out. <laughs> the Eliwick one is pretty cool. The Beholder one is terrifying, obviously. This Beholder pet is going to give you nightmares forever. It's kind of cool. That sleeve is just uh, kind of hilarious. This pet is really weird and gross. If that's your kind of thing, though, I can, I'm not looking forward to seeing this creepy little dude hanging out in all of my matches. We've got some Borderless Planeswalkers, if you haven't seen these already. Kind of neat. I won't buy them because I'm not excited for them. What I am a little more excited about is we've got these dragons. Which, whew, that one looks so good. These dragons all look pretty good. The adult gold dragon I think looks incredible. Such a majestic little dragon right there. The Tiamat is pretty good. And then we've got these, the legendary dragons, which these alternate arts are also used on sleeves. When we check out the mastery pass, we'll see a little bit more of these. I think these are all really, really good really good and then of course we've got some monster manual entries these were spoiled i think last week pricing on those 5500 gold or 1100 gems i think they look meh they kind of remind me of those like heavy metal style kaldheim skins that were released i didn't love those either but i'm sure some people will love them we've got the uh module cards which i absolutely hate these I feel like more established D&D players are really going to appreciate these. But for me, like even this, the Hall of the Storm Giants, which is my favorite living land out of the set, I just wouldn't want that at all. If we hop over to the Mastery Pass, so when you buy it, you get this Tiamat sleeve. Oh, we can't, we can't make it bigger, which is sad. But you get this Tiamat sleeve, which is pretty cool. You get this adorable little red dragon and the Eliwick avatar. And then at... Level 30, we get a green dragon pet. Cute little dude. Down here at 45, we're getting a blue dragon. And then I think, yep, at 60, we get this adorable little white dragon. I think this thing is so cute. Super, super adorable. Uh, level 54, we stop getting packs. I think that was pretty standard for the other ones, too. Somewhere around there. So, boom, 27 packs for free. Right? Yeah, 27 free D&D free packs, plus 
There's packs in the paid tier. And then when we get to level 70, we get this cool ancient red dragon sleeve. I think that looks really good. I like that. Like it a lot. And then, same thing, right? A mythic card. Nothing really exciting at the end. I think there should be something more exciting than a random card. There should be some big ticket item. You should get, like, 10 booster packs or a stack of wild cards or... I think maybe there should be a cool... Like, if there was a, there's a red, red, blue, white, and green dragons, there should have been, like, a gold dragon at the end. Or just something, like, super awesome, right? This doesn't feel awesome. But what kind of is awesome, if we take a look at the mastery tree, it's the same as every other time. Except in the third slot, instead of getting an avatar, this time we're getting a sleeve. Which, like I said, those arts from before, they look really, really good on these sleeves. This icing death is really cool. The what is this? Irmith? Irmrith? I don't know how to pronounce that blue one. I think Ebon Death here is the coolest one. Same with, uh, where is it? This skin, pretty cool. I like that sleeve, and I like the skin of it that's available for purchase. I probably won't do it, but ooh boy, is it cool. And so then we'll go through with green. We get, we get the Living Lands with each one, right? So we get Lair of the Hydra, Cave of the Frost Dragon... Hall of the Storm Giants, which I think this just looks so clean. It, it reminds me of the Academy Ruins art, and I played so much Academy Ruins back in Legacy. I love that card, and I think like this just has a very similar camera and the underwater buildings. Just a very good throwback to the art on Academy Ruins. I really like this one. Uh, the Hive of the Eye Tyrant, pretty good, pretty crisp. Den of the Bugbear, not bad, right? We'll zoom in on the other two here. Cave of the Frost Dragon, I really like this art, that frozen dragon head. Uh, I think I think the blue one is going to see the most play, and then this will probably be number two, but I think Faceless Haven is just better than Cave of the Frost Dragon. The evasion, like the flying on this one and the menace on this one might, might matter. I don't think making a token with Den of the Bugbear is going to be as important as just beating a little harder with Faceless Haven. The green one, very interesting that you can sink a lot of mana and make it huge. I don't expect games to go long enough for that mana sink to really be important, but depending on how the meta shakes out, sometimes having the biggest guy on the ground is good, so we'll see. And then here we've got Varus Silvermoon, and then we've got the dragon. Here we get Nadar, the selfless paladin, and the dragon. I don't know how to pronounce, what is this, Grazilax, the Illithid Scholar, super creepy. And the blue dragon. In black we get Asmodeus, which is a shame because I was saying this card looks super cool, but it's actually just kind of terrible. Uh, I saw Sam Black post. We'll, we'll talk about Asmodeus in a second here because we'll want to read it. Delina, the wild mage. And then, of course, the Inferno of Star Mounts. Those are all pretty cool. Going back to talk about Asmodeus for a second. Let's go not collected. Ooh. Asmode. Ooh. Asmode. If you would draw a card, instead exile the top card of your library face down, which I hate, because you can play one, pay one black mana to return all cards exiled with Asmodeus to their owner's hand, and you lose that much life. So not only does it take your draw step, but you have to pay the life later to get it back. The flip side of Asmodeus, besides a flavor hit of being a 6-6 six, six for 6, devil god, is that for 3 black you can draw 7 cards. So I know a lot of Magic players aren't familiar with Ice Age and Vintage that much, but this is a very Necropotence feeling card. Triple black to draw a handful of cards. Look at that, like I'm, I'm telling you, it's loud again, right? Can you hear that? The Street Sweeper going by for like the second or third time. It's 12.30 at my house, it's still, it's not early, but what the hell is going on out there? The, uh, the thing I saw Sam Black tweet about this card is that he intends to put the draw 7 on the stack and then sacrifice Asmodeus, get it off the battlefield before the draw 7 resolves. Maybe with, uh, what is it? Ooh, we played against it yesterday. Village Rights? Or something else? Maybe that's doable in Historic. I don't think in Standard getting this thing off the battlefield is going to be easy enough to warrant jumping through all the hoops to do it. But you never know. We'll see what happens. A little bit of a shame. This card seems pretty weak and clunky and ugly for it to be such a 
a big flavor hit. Like, I'm sure a lot of D&D players are super excited to see Asmodeus in the game as a legendary devil god. Same with uh, Vecna. Vecna, super cool. Vecna, the Book of Vile Darkness. Oh, we don't get to see the... It shows us the 2-2 two, two zombie token. Is Yeah, can I see the other token? Like, it says one of two up there, but how do I... How do I see the second token? Because I want to see the Vecna token, not the zombie. I've seen a million zombie tokens throughout my life. There goes the Street Sweeper again, I'm telling you. It's just the noisiest day in the world. Thursdays are always like this, I guess. But I really think this is cool. Um, if we ever get Historic Brawl as a permanent queue, this definitely seems like something that I might try to do. The fact that these are all so cheap, maybe we are going to get some kind of Exodia deck and standard just because you've got to exile the book and both of these but that's all you have to do is tap it and exile all three to make the 8-8 eight, eight black which is indestructible and has at the beginning of your upkeep you may pay two to draw and lose and at the beginning of turn you may have it get plus x plus x where x is the number of cards in your hand i was reading the flavor of this vecna was some kind of uh, I think a lich that began to, f or was, Vecna was a very powerful wizard that feared his own mortality. I think it was a him. So, whichever, Vecna did some kind of crazy magic and ended up getting exploded. And the only thing remaining of Vecna's physical body was the left eye and the left hand. Although... I can't remember if it was, like, the spirit or the essence or whatever, but, like, Vecna's soul, kind of, although whatever the soul of a lich is, survived. Vecna was also the original, well, the author of the original Book of Vile Darkness, although apparently other wizards added to the book later, but Vecna was the original author. So the, the in-game lore is that you have to cut off your own hand and your own eye to put Vecna's eye in you to get the power, which is why both of these cards reference losing life. You equip, pay a life for each card in your hand. When you cast this, well, when it enters the battlefield, you draw and lose a life. That life loss is supposed to be the flavor of, you know, cutting out your own eye or cutting off your own hand to use Vecna's. So I just think that's pretty cool. And th th those cards look like maybe just good enough in the upcoming like post-rotation standard that maybe we'll get an Exodia thing. I think that would be pretty cool. But uh, yeah, that's it. We cover everything in the store. Let's double check real quick. Just wanted to do a little store review. Boom, boom. We covered all that. The gems are all the same. The packs, like I said, we bought 30 packs earlier. We ended up getting four of a terrible rare card. Pretty ugly bundles, avatars. I don't think there's anything new over here yet. These are all pretty standard. The sleeves, I think they're all the exquisite sleeves. Nothing got added here. Oh wait, you can you can buy the Xanathar Guild Kingpin. Oh, <laughs> so creepy. Okay, so for 600 gems, you can get that. That one was added in. And then pets, you might be able to buy. Yep, you can buy the Beholder pet. Super creepy. This Ebon Death one is so cool. Oh, Julie has this. It looks good. As far as our pet, I'm using the Thopter right now, I believe. Although we have the books. I like the books too. Oh, we got a bear. That's right. We got the we got the bear. And we can power up the bear. And we can get the little stands. Let's get these books on the little stands. There we go. I don't have Evan Death, sadly. Alright. Oh, let's get the silver quill back on the stand. Cool. So yeah, that's going to be it for our store review today. Oh, we're going to look forward. I'm not super excited to play... Oops. Not super excited to play Auras because Portable Hole is in the format. Where is it? It's in our white cards, right? Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Porta. This card's going to be destroying us. I actually added... Two Karametra's Blessing to the sideboard. We might have to put this in the main. This is the only thing that beats Portable Hole now. We can't use the dog because it's not getting destroyed. And we can't use All Side of Life's Blessing because Portable Hole is white. So if we give our creature protection from white, 
most of our auras are going to fall off. We only keep Curious Obsession and Arcane Flight. Those are the only two. Those are the only two mono blue auras. Everything else falls off. Sentinel's Eyes falls off. Uh, all that glitters. Oh, Aether Tunnel stays. But Staggering Insight and all that glitters and Sentinel's Eyes falling off is a big deal. So we can't ever give our creature pro white. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how the format shakes out. Should be interesting. Latest deck lists. Everything is uh. Everything's old. These have all been talked about already. So, get out there. Let me know in the comments. What are you excited for this set? What are you going to be trying out? Excited to see some of Champ Dog stuff. I'm sure he'll be doing some cool stuff in Standard. Um, Yeah, like I, like I was saying before, I wasn't excited for this set, but it's here. We are on day one. So, we've got three more months until we go back to Innistrad, which I'm looking forward to. I think a lot more than this one, I'm looking forward to going back to Innistrad. Um... And, like, and we're looking forward to standard rotation so that I might get back into standard. I just don't want to craft a bunch of... Basically, I don't want to craft Throne of the Eldraine the whole set right now. Pretty much. Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to get out on the ladder a little bit today. See how much portable holes I have fallen into. And we'll be back on Monday. Or no, it is Thursday. So we'll be back tomorrow on Friday. Kind of let everybody know how it goes. Check in with everybody. Let Let's see what what your guys' day one goes like. I'm excited. And yeah, we'll be back. Until until then, as always, I've been PB the Fox with the Ravnica Historical Society. You've all been awesome, and happy dungeoning, people. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.